regularly scheduled meeting of August 19th, 2021. My name is Lisa Mitten and I will be preparing, presenting the cases to the board for their review in today's public hearing. We are convened here at the Sunny West Conference Center in the Howard Office Building located at 700 2nd Avenue South. For these public hearings, the board reviews the correspondence submitted in support of and opposition to these cases. The board also reviews correspondence and recommendations from other government agencies in preparation for these meetings. Today, in today's hearing, staff will present the site plans, maps, photographs, and other documents that comprise the case record. At the conclusion of the staff presentation, the appellant will present his or her case to the board. After the appellant's presentation, if anyone is here wishing to speak in support of the appeal, they may do so. If any opposition is present, the board will then hear from those parties. After the opposition presents its testimony, the appellant will have a period for rebuttal. According to the BZA rules, the appellant has five minutes for presentation if no opposition is present. In contested cases, the BZA rules allow 10 minutes for each side to present testimony. Should the appellant wish to provide rebuttal testimony, the appellant should reserve some portion of the allotted 10 minutes. At the conclusion of each hearing, the board will deliberate and then vote on the case. The board is vested by the power to act on these cases under the provisions of the Metro Zoning Code Section 1740-180. All section numbers that we refer to come from the Metro Zoning Code, which applies to the entire jurisdiction of the Metropolitan Government. The Zoning Code was adopted by the Metro Council and became effective on January 1st, 1998. I will introduce the entire Zoning Code and make it part of today's record. The Metro Code requires a, a record of these proceedings. Because BZA meetings are recorded for Metro Nashville Network, it is imperative that anyone addressing the board come forward to the podium and speak into the microphone. All speakers should identify themselves by name and address and then make their desired presentation. The Metro Code requires four members of our seven member board to establish quorum. The code also requires at least four affirmative votes to grant an appeal. In the event that five or more members are present, but the appeal fails to receive four affirmative votes, the case will remain on the board's agenda for the next 30 days. Applications that fail to receive four affirmative votes within 30 days of the public hearing shall be deemed denied by operation of law. Pursuant to board rules, an agreed party may appeal board decisions to Chancery or Circuit Court within 60 days of the entry of the BZA order. Additionally, as per the BZA rules, an agreed party may file a motion for rehearing by the BZA within 60 days of the original hearing date. After that time elapses, the board's de decision becomes final and no further action can be taken. If your appeal is granted, you are required to obtain the permit for which you applied. A permit must be obtained within two years for the board's approval to remain valid. It should also be noted that if false or misleading testimony is presented to the board, any board approval could be revoked at a later date by means of a show cause hearing before the BZA. Mr. Chairman, I submit that all cases have been filed in proper order, all appellants have been notified by certified mail, and all legal notice requirements have been fulfilled. All right, thank you. We do have a preliminary announcement con concerning a deferred case. Case 2021-110 for 516 Stevenson Street has been deferred to the September 2nd meeting to allow time for the applicant to meet with neighbors and the council member concerning their bearings request. The BZA utilizes a consent agenda for its meetings. One board member reviews the record for each case prior to the hearing and identifies those cases which meet their criteria for the requested action by the ap appellant. If the reviewing board member determines the testimony in the case would not alter the material facts in any substantial way, the case is recommended to the board for approval. The following items are proposed for the consent agenda on today's docket. Note that if anyone is in opposition is present for any one of these cases, it will be removed from the consent agenda and heard in its original order on today's docket. Case 2021-112 located at 601 Neal Avenue, requesting an item D appeal to change the footprint of a legally non-conforming duplex within an RS5 district. Is there anyone here in opposition to this case? Seeing none, next case, case 2021-114, located at 6221 Brownlee Drive. The request of variance from the street setback requirements within the RS40 district. They're seeking to construct a single family residence. Is anyone here in opposition to this case, to case 2021-114? Seeing none. 
Mr. Chairman, we'd right. like to make a motion. Uh, I have two cases on the consent agenda. Any motion and a uh, second? I guess I was motion either you were the second. Um, any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye, raise your hand. Any opposed? Those two uh, cases pass. Mr. Chairman, we're ready to proceed with the cases to be heard today. First case, 2021-107, located at 7720 Sawyer Brown Road. The request and a variance from the street setback requirements within the R20 district. Here's an overview of the zoning map showing the subject property. Here's an aerial view of the surrounding area. Here's the provided site plan showing the requested variance of a 60 foot front back versus the required 90 foot street setback. Existing conditions of the site and the surrounding areas. Is there anyone here in opposition to case 7720? Seeing opposition is present, the appellant will state their case and reserve a portion of your time if you would like to have rebuttal. Thank you, Grover Collins with Collins Legal on behalf of uh, the Michelle Fairbanks Living Trust. My address is 414 Union Street, Suite 1110, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We're just requesting a uh, change from the 90-foot setback to the 60-foot setback. And the reason for the request is to enable us to put two buildings there for a standard HPR. We think that complies with the general character of the neighborhood and what's generally going on in the development in the area. Um, <coughs> I'll reserve any remaining time to any of the opposition. And if there's any questions from the board, I'm happy to take those at this point. But this is pretty straightforward. So. And the hardship is the uh, depth of the lot. And I think that both of your units you do show us at, at the 20 foot minimum required rear setback. So you're that's correct. All right. So that and that's what dictated your request for, for yes. that you have now. OK. Any questions from the board at this time? Okay. Uh, I do have one. I'm sorry, one, one. Yeah, there was reference in our packet about um, 7704 and 7700. Um, those addresses are 60 feet and 50 feet setback from the road. I don't know if you can hear me okay. Um, I was wondering where they were in relation to these two units. I, I, I didn't catch the addresses, but they're they're going to be right down the street from those, is my understanding of it. Are they, they're in this, okay, maybe we can see on this. All right, 7704, 7700. Okay, so it's generally comparable to that area. Right. Can you tell us the setback of the houses that are right beside it? On each side? I don't, I don't, oh, you're asking, I'm yes, sorry I'm, about no, that. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, thought you were just, um, I, I don't, I don't know that offhand. I apologize for that. But uh, the way we're wanting the setbacks, we, we feel like it'll be in the general character of, of where it's going to be. We're from the way that lot is situated. You'll see what, uh, Chairman Taylor was asking. We're going to be 20 feet from the back part of that lot. So we should be right in line with those others is still going to be a 60 foot setback. It's just a difference from the 90 to the to the 60 is the request. The lot's too small for two hey, sir, you don't have a you don't have your, the right to speak now. You will in a minute, but you're not going to speak when it's not your turn. Are there any other questions for this applicant? Do you know when this lot was created? It's awfully odd. I I do not. I I can get that answer for you if if you need me to do that. But, Tell you what, while, while we're taking that, then I'll, I'll figure that out for you. Any other questions for the applicant? All right, sir, you, you uh, will have nine minutes for rebuttal. At this point, anyone in opposition uh, to this case has an opportunity to speak. They can come up to the table. And yes, sir, any, if you, uh, again, collectively, you'll have 10 minutes. So you can come up one at a time. You can all come up, but just come up, uh, turn the mic on, state your name and address, and why you're opposed. You just need to hit hit the button. 
Hold that. There you go. There. Little bitty button. Okay, my name is Carl Ralston. I live at 7712 Sawyer Brown Road. I've owned the property for about 25 years. Um, could you show the other slide the, with the blank? The other one? Uh, yes, that one. So um, when I pur purchased the property originally, what I loved about it is all of the houses all along there sit up on a ridge and they're really stunning from the road. You look up the hill and they're all built on the ridge. So what um, what the, he's doing by proposing to put two single family homes w and changing the setback, it's gonna change that whole right side of the road. Um, I think the lot is too small for two houses, first of all, but I know we're just talking about the setback. But both of those two units are gonna be built in front of, in the basically in front of all the other houses to the right and to the left. If you'll see all of the houses, um, all the ones to the right of the property and three of the ones to the left of the property are all well over 90 feet off the road. Um, and his are gonna sit right up on the road. So I oppose, I just don't think it's right for the neighborhood. I don't think it's intuitive to the neighborhood. Uh, across the street, they did, they did build, you see those two kind of to the left across the street. They are townhouses that are built probably, I don't know how far off the road, but um, they sit on the low side of the road, and so you kind of don't even, they're kind of down in a hole. It doesn't, uh, you're not looking up at them. So I think the setback's not right for the neighborhood. I think it'll ruin the look of the whole street as all of those are sitting up on the ridge and they're really pretty. So I have questions for Any this. questions or? And well, if you drive down the street, you can kind of see they all sit up really pretty on the ridge. And the, the house that was there was a little cottage. So there was a house there before? There was a house there that it was just a little cottage that kind of sit back as far as it could. It's it probably the, less than 20 feet wide. Yeah. And, and that's one of the questions that we always have is when you have a weird lot like this, was it, how did it get to be there? Um, you know, it makes our, our job a little difficult because it's nice if when things are all nice and neat, but mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, it is a lot and it is duplex eligible. Uh, we're not addressing that, whether or not he can or can't do two. The appropriateness of that is certainly um, a valid opinion by folks that have it one way or the other, but it's neither here nor there in terms of what we're dealing with today because the only thing that's on our plate is how far can the two units that this man has, a person, uh, developer has a right to build, can how far can it be from the street? And, uh, and it's a certainly an odd, weird shape, lot different than all the others in the neighborhood, and that's a hard thing to... to yeah, I just think it'd be a travesty to build that close to that right, the right side of the street. It would and, that, and that is an understood uh, position, too. All right, well, thank you for the board's time. That's right, we do have a question from one of our board members. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell from this map, but in your testimony, you sort of talked about a ridge. So am I correct in assuming, like, if I'm coming from, like, where it says Valdeberry Lane, or I can't see that if I have my glasses on, but that's what it looks like. Where it says yeah, Lane. Yeah, you're coming from if the I'm left side. Up, of the, mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm coming up the street, are you saying that it's kind of like a hill, like there's a ridge, like? Uh huh. It is. Okay, that helps because I was wondering, like, it looks like all of the houses as you go up the ridge are kind of like closer, but they're all like similar setbacks, and then the ones on the beginning of the ridge are kind of a little bit further back. So I just wanted to understand that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Could we see the picture of where the sign is? You know, the note, thank you. You can see the back of his property. Right? Sir, you don't, if you, you are welcome to speak, but you've got to come up here and it, you, you can come up here and you can just state your name and you can say whatever you want for seven minutes and 58 seconds and we would welcome that, but you it, can't. It, it's hard for me to keep quiet. I'm well, th that's why you have an opportunity to yeah. speak instead of speaking okay. from the, the, the audience, which you're not allowed to do. So come I up. I apologize, and, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> come up and state your name and uh, your address and then tell us what's on your mind. Is this, uh, am I on? Your own uh, okay. name address. Mark, and Mark Blair, lot three, Glen Trace. 7708 Sawyer Brown. Uh, you pull up the map, you can see where I'm at. Um, there was a house that got condemned 
it was an eyesore for years. I was, I was the uh, second person to buy in this subdivision. I've been there since 87. Uh, the lot is just too small for two buildings. I understand we're not here for that, but in order for him to park vehicles for both houses, he needs the setback in order to park the vehicles. That's the whole reason we're here. And if we allow that, those two houses are going up is my argument. Uh, yeah, there's, you can't, driveways or garage or whatever is what he's trying to accommodate with whoever buys those. But there, the lot's just not big enough for two buildings and we can't oppose that, but we can oppose the setback for him to get parking up there. So that's, uh, anyway, that's uh, all I got. All right. I'll try to keep quiet. <laughs> Well, like I said, you, you still got you still have time to say whatever's on your I've mind. But once, you, once your time's up and you say you're done, then then please be done. I'm done. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, any other any questions for the folks in opposition? All right, we'll hear back from the applicant. Thank you. Uh, to answer the board's question, it looks like the first time this was divided was a deed. It, it looks like, and I haven't looked at the adjoining parcels, but it looks like that was all part of one farm back in 53. The first time that little cutout was, according to this deed, was 1974. So it's been there for quite a while, yeah. But that, that's all I have, unless there is any other question. question. If you don't get a modification on the 90 foot you really can't build anything on that lot can you not not the way we'd want to we certainly can't build two we um but even if you build one with that 20 foot setback in the back it, it's a weird lot it's I mean, it, it it's a tall and skinny sort of in a wrong way is what <laughs> you're know, telling in me. a completely wrong way yeah, yeah understood and thank you you know the, these yeah. are, the design is as we put you know this would be single family homes so we're, it's not going to look like the tall yeah yeah <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions for the applicant? Did you have anything else to add? No, I just appreciate the board's time. Thank you. Okay. We will close the hearing. Go ahead. Um, I was going to say, I actually think the law could be buildable. The modified setback, not necessarily just eyeballing it and blinking the network. Um, so I actually, I wouldn't be in favor of the full variance request, maybe a modified version, like an 80 foot request instead of 60. I don't know if you've heard that. Uh, this one, too, when it's done. Um, okay, okay, I'm back. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Christina, did you have a, you were, you were saying. Oh, yes. I was looking at this that's on the screen, and I see that a house is buildable at about an 80-foot setback. So I would be not inclined to approve a 60-foot setback, but maybe an 80-foot setback, which is a, a little bit of a compromise. So, and in that 80-foot that setback would then give them, um, what is it, 25 feet of depth to work with? Well, I don't know what the depth um, of it is. We can only guess because it's not shown on here. But I do see this exhibit that shows that a home can be built on this property at a approximately 80-foot setback. So I don't know the what the depth of their home is without 
a dimension. Yeah, 124 or 25 feet on one side and 165 on the other. Is that, is that the right way to read this? I don't see it. I'm looking at the narrative that says right if they do a 90 foot setback, it only gives them 15 foot of depth to build a house on the north side of the line. Yeah, that might be. I saw that in the narrative too. I'm just looking at this drawing that's on our screen that maybe we can open the hearing and he can speak. Speak if he wishes to Does speak. anybody have objection to asking the applicant? Okay, we'll open the public hearing. And Christine, what was your question to the applicant? Joseph had the question. Or Joseph, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, just going to the, the 80 foot setback that then gives you 25 foot depth, correct? That's my understanding of it. And the, the entire lot size, um, and this is based off the partial viewer, which was the former map, would be the 150 on the front, 170 on the bottom side, 130 on the top, and then 150 on the back on that depth. But still, we've got to have the setbacks that we've got to have to get back, and we simply just can't build what we're wanting to without that 60 foot. Uh, okay, we'll close the public hearing again. Mr. Taylor, if you had something to say, I can wait. Okay. So typically when we like look at these, we always get a little bit more information. That's why I asked about like, what are the setbacks on each side? Just because I personally, I just don't feel like I have enough information. And I think that this is an odd shaped lot and a variance is likely warranted, but I don't know. It, like, thank you, Ms. Kaepernick for like giving the math and sort of saying like what you think might be appropriate, but it was sort of hard for me when I looked through the packet, I'm like, Typically, we get like a map, we get an idea of how much is on each side and, you know, and so we sort of meet people where they are. And so I was going to say this, and I have not been able to say this for a long time, so I'm super excited to say this, but I don't think, you know, certain horses aren't made for certain courses. And so they came today asking for a variance to build what they wanted to build. And I do think there's a variance warranted because it is an odd shaped lot and they have those other setbacks that they have to meet. But before, I don't know, before I gave a variance, I would just like to know, like, a little bit more information and then, you know, a little bit more context about what's going on. So that's, those are my comments. I think I see the setbacks on this. I don't, but maybe you're looking for something different. I mean, I see he, they have the side setbacks as 10 feet. Okay. And then the rear setback is 20 feet. And I'll say that when you were gone one day, I did use your phrase not yes, as yes. not as well as you, but I did well, try. <laughs> and it does look it does look like just for clarification that the if you're looking at this drawing that's on the screen, the top right corner of each building hits right at the 20 foot setback. Okay. Thank you. So there's there's a little dotted line that's not always uh, it's not always clear, but it, there's a little dotted line that says 20 foot setback, and it hits the top right corner as you're looking at it. If you're looking at yeah, if you were looking at the, the, the house from the street, it would be the back left corner of the house, but it's the top right corner on our drawing right here that hits at that 20-foot that that setback okay, mark. Thank you. That helps. Thank you. So we got, uh, we, I feel like we're kind of getting into, into architecture world, and so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in between the two. and. <laughs> Not, and putting them both on this, well, one of them's already made a, a point. They actually both have, and to just see it, it, what, uh, is, there, is there a compromise? Is there a middle ground that we can get to today? Uh, is it, would it take more work? And what is appropriate for a lot that is, again, short and odd? In alignment to what Ms. Ms. Davis was saying, um, I feel like more information is needed, especially for the homes that are adjacent to the lot and knowing what their setback is. It'd also be nice, uh, we heard that there's a berm in which all the homes are set back on, to have some type of picture of, you know, what the street context looks like, but especially the the neighboring properties. Right now, the, the image we have is kind of zoomed in to this specific property and doesn't give a lot of context. So, I guess the um, on on one of the, I guess and I don't know we may want to ask uh, if there are questions that that would come back to the applicant to ask the applicant. But when I hear when I see a proposal like this, I'm, I'm making I'm making an assumption, and again we may want to ask that 
you know, I have a lot. I want to see what I can do. I'm not going to go design two houses and have all that done before I know whether or not I can do it and just where it has to be. And I think that's totally fair. Um, and at the same time, our board is saying, well, the details matter and, and how it fits and where it goes really does matter and we want to see a little bit more. And so I'm trying to think through, well, what is the right uh, signal or communication back to, you know, both parties to say, well, this is kind of what we expect. I mean, we, we have uh, at least, you know, a board member saying, hey, I think that this is buildable. It, it uh, more to code than it uh, is being proposed. Um, and, you know, whether or not it's one or two is, um, I, you know, that I don't know. I mean, if, if of course, if they could build two without a setback variance, that we wouldn't be here, you know. I mean, but, um, and so I, I guess my question is, what is it that we need if we wanted to um, kind of push this down the road, or is it something that we feel like we could just continue to ask and maybe come up with something, and and then what confidence can we give to both parties to say, hey, if, if you satisfy this, if you address this, it's you know it's worth you spending some more time and investment in, and this is truly what we want. Well, it seems like the contextual street setback does not apply here, because I'm reading it's a 90-foot setback triple minimum, which I'm not all that familiar with. But does that mean the contextual street setback is not applied? Contextual, uh, Lisa, if you'll go to the uh, aerial of that. The contextual street setback does apply, but it's it's the average of the four homes, two on each side. And as you can tell, those two houses more than exceed triple the table, which is 90 feet. And that's the maximum setback we can require. So that's why in this instance, our office did not ask them for a contextual street setback because it's it pretty much a moot point because um, we we know it would far and exceed what the maximum setback would be required. So that's, that's why his base setback is 90 feet. I don't know. I just I think they have a right to build on the lot, um, and you were um, mentioning you didn't think they could build on the lot, but I do think they can with a mo well, like I said, a modified. Mm -hmm. Right. They may not be able to build two of them, but they could they could build but, one house mm -hmm. somehow wedged in well, there. So I mean, we're not well. And again, they're asking for a setback variance, and so they're you know in terms of you know the, the code allows it now whether or not it's possible, you know, you know, what is the right constraint that would keep one something from happening? But, you know, they're not asking for a lot size variance. They're not asking to put, you know, any other thing. They're just like how far back from the road. And so, um, and, and that is, you know, how you judge it based on, you know, it, it's a hardship. I think we've all recognized that the lot is, does have a hardship in terms of being, uh, differently shaped and sized from its neighbors. Mm -hmm. And then to me, the question that we're faced with is what is the appropriate setback for this lot? And it, whatever that setback is, if they can build two, they can build two. If they can't build two, they, that's, that's, that's their situation. But it is what is the appropriate setback for, for this lot, given all of those things. And, and I guess the, question to you all is do you need more information from the applicant to, to help with that or do you feel like you can agree to a number today so I, I wanted to say like for me like I didn't even get to what they're building like one two like I don't care like no. that's that's not what I'm looking at I'm looking at a structure and how it re orients to like the right. rest of the street and whether it's going to damage like other properties, which is something that we look at just based right. off of where it's oriented on the street. And so for me, and unless I was sort of going to lean into Ms. Kaepernick and Mr. Cole with their expertise, um, because I think just the only thing I still might need is just like, I want to see the context of the street 
but that Mr. Cole said earlier, and unless the earlier discussion has changed his mind, that's I think that's the only thing I left would like to see, unless you guys think, I'm still listening, unless you guys think that we have enough to kind of go ahead and based off the sketch. So. Can we see the or uh, aerial again, pretty please? Thank you. Because they were describing a ridge, and I know that that impacts view and how people how the street feels when you're walking on it and how it feels to your neighbors. So I don't know, but I could be wrong. I'm still listening. So I'm going to lean into our architects. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I think that the opposition really needed to bring more information okay. to prove right. their point. And um, I feel like that was their concern, and they should bring the pictures. But I don't know. I mean, we can ask the applicant to bring the pictures. Um, if that's what you're asking for. No, that's fair. No, that make, that was a good point. Christina, I, I agree with you on that. That's that's more of the, the opposition's role um, in that. I know that you mentioned an 80-foot setback. Mm -hmm. I think that... Uh, I don't think that that's... I think that that's actually pretty, pretty fair. Um, it gives them enough depth to make it still... You know, a buildable site. Is it ideal? No, but it is a concession. I'm not a, obviously I will defer to our architects because you guys are a whole lot smarter than I am. I was thinking more in the 75 range just because it gives that little, you're tight on the back. Contextually, five feet plus or minus, I don't think is huge one way or the other, but it gets pretty tight in the back with that 20 feet. So and the that, if you I think, liked eighty, I, but I I think seventy five probably. I don't care how many houses they build them. Sort of with you know Ashanti on that one. I mean I, that's none of my business on this particular point in time. That's Joey's problem, uh, not mine. So I mean, but are you going to go with uh, then? Are you going to increase the rear setback? I think the set, the rear setback is just twenty. I think it's yeah. It's I think just that's 20, right. So they're not they're not asking there. for. They just have a little more room, I guess. Is what I was what I was yeah. thinking in in terms more of room to build, or more. You keep mentioning the rear being tight, so that's what I'm just trying. Oh, to I'm say. sorry, I, I missed your point. Yeah. Well, maybe I did too. I was just I was just. The, the, I think I think I'm sorry to speak for you. But the, no, you're fine. So the, I, I think you you just mentioned the rear is tight. So yeah. You on on, on the upper off. end of the right. Yeah. So if you go with 75, you're saying it allows them to shift the building towards the street, correct? Yeah, exactly. So if we go with 75, then you want to increase the rear setback in order to shift the building. That's why the you're street. the architect and I'm the lawyer on this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we could. Okay, okay. Just, just I'm trying just to trying to find that. something that, that accommodates us a small enough. It, it's a bizarre lot. I don't know. Do we have the? We don't have the authority to increase the rear, do we? No. No. Okay. Then I shut up. <laughs> All right. So we've got uh, trying to move this. We got at least a couple, a handful of folks that are comfortable with uh, 81. That's more comfortable with 75. Is there a motion to see where we all stand, or any other thoughts? All right, how about a motion to see where we stand? Okay. I um, I will move to approve a request for an 80-foot setback um, due to the um, narrowness of the lot, the shallowness of the lot. I have a motion. Is there a second? I second it. I have a motion and have a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of that motion, uh, raise your hand and say aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. Thank you. Best of luck, and next case. Next case is 2021-108, located at Zero Hobson Pike. So it's a parcel located in the RM6 zoning district. It's a parcel viewer and the over overhead aerial view. They're seeking a variance from the 40-foot front street setback. They're seeking a variance to a 20-foot front setback to construct a multifamily development. So anyone here in opposition to this case located at Zero Hobson Pike? Seeing opposition, the appellant will first come forward, state their case, and after the board has discussed it with them, we will then allow opposition to speak. 
Is there anyone here to represent this case? Is the applicant here? Is the applicant present? Uh, the applicant is us. Uh, well, typically, in when in a case where the applicant does not show the first time it's deferred, it is usually um, and, and it's not particularly a good thing for the opposition who's taking their time to be here, and I respect that. Um, but this, we do have a, a really long history of, if, you know, the very, you know, the first time. Mr. Chairman, if, if we're going to defer it, I'd like to ask at least the folks that are here that took the time to come, what's a convenient time for them on our meeting schedules instead of, is, I don't think that would be unreasonable. I'm sorry, to, to ask the opposition because, you know, they may not be able to be here the next time we meet or something like that. The, um, we have, and that is not unusual either to, to, to say that, you know, someone's taking the time uh, to have them have the opportunity to at least uh, speak. Do you want to introduce the case very briefly to allow the gentleman, if you would like to, sir, would you like to just to speak today? Sure. Okay. Um, then if, if we could just give a gist of what the, the applicant is asking for, and that way if the, if the opposition, if the uh, person is not able to come back, at least it's on the record that, that uh, they did show up at the date and time that the hearing was to be held uh, and stated uh, their case against it. Okay. Again, this is an RM6 zoned parcel, and they are seeking to construct a multifamily development at a reduced street setback of 20 feet along the street versus the 40 foot that's required. Um, here's a copy of their proposed site plan. And here's the existing conditions and the surrounding area. That's the extent of this case at this point. If the opposition would And sir, would if, like you, to if you'd like forward. to speak, then you can come up and, and to the mic and Uh, so was there anybody else in opposition to this case? Okay. So. Sir, just uh, turn the mic on and state your name and address and why you came out today to, to speak against this. My name is Larry Price. I live at 100 Cambridge Close, Antioch, Tennessee, 37013. Um, I and other concerned members of our community became aware of this uh, only at 1130 this morning. So um, I frankly scrambled to be here. Um, my concern is that this property is directly across from the middle school and reducing a, 20, re reducing a setback from 40 feet to 20 feet, cutting it in half um, and bringing those homes closer to a busy street like Hobson Pike is not in the best interest of our community. And I will be glad to come uh, to the next meeting, assuming that the developer does appear. And hopefully um, some of my colleagues from the community uh, can also join me and express their concern. Okay. Uh, any questions for that, or for, for the uh, opposition? Um, when you say you learned of it at 11 30, how did mm -hmm. you learn of it? Um, my neighbors, the other members of the community, emailed me. And in fact, we had a community meeting last evening, a, a district council meeting, and this did not come up from the council member. Do you, it's not their responsibility to bring it up, but do you drive by the site? By yes. This property, you drive by it. Yes. Any other questions? What? By any chance, was there a sign on the property? I will check this afternoon. Well, I'm, I'm actually looking over at our. It is there's present. A, there's a photograph of the sign. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate you being here. And uh, okay. again, uh, it's unusual. This is an unusual case where we have folks show up wanting to speak against something that the applicant doesn't show up for. But just being respectful of you coming out, we wanted to make sure that you got to have, have that chance. Um, uh, with that, I'll move that we defer. Um, what does the board do, or desire? One meeting. Uh, move this uh, to the. Yeah, th this this uh, case is deferred to the first. Well, the motion is to defer to the first meeting of September. September second. Which will be September second. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. We'll we will hear that on September second. Next case. Next case, case 2021-111, located at 132B Stewart's Ferry Pike. They are seeking a variance from the maximum allowable footprint for accessory buildings on an RS-10 zoned parcel. There's an overview of the zoning. Is the applicant for this case here? Is the applicant present? Then, sir, if you would come on down. Is, an, is there anyone here in opposition to this case? Seeing none, I'll proceed. Here's an aerial view of the subject property and surrounding areas. Here's the proposed site plan. The requesting, the total variance is a 624 square foot variance from the allowable footprint for the accessory structures. They're proposing to construct this 1,201 square foot garage with a lean-to on each end. Based on the size and footprint of their house, they're allowed 833 square feet, and they have already have two existing structures for 256. So they're seeking to build this garage with the lean-tos, uh, which exceeds the allowable footprint. Here's the proposed elevations of what they're proposing. It is a corner lot, so here's a view from the corner of the street. And here's a view of where the proposed garage with lean-tos will go. And here's the surrounding area. If you would state your name, address, and present your case for the board. My name is Matt Gartner. I am representing Garner Construction and Don Lionhurst. Uh, address is 6950 Southeast Tater Peeler Road, Lebanon, Tennessee. Uh, we are proposing to build a structure. Uh, I feel the lot is a corner <laughs> lot. It's got adequate size on the lot to uh, accommodate the structure. Uh, it is going to be in good taste to the neighborhood, and the homeowner is here today as well. He has uh, conversed with the neighbors and uh, filled out all the required envelopes. Uh, he's he's informed me that the. Neighborhood in general is excited about the property. Uh, obviously, there's nobody or no, excited about this, the construction of this garage, uh, and it's, he hasn't met any opposition. So obviously, no opposition's here today. Um, he's looking to secure some additional storage for some of the items that he has on there and uh, um, using this as a good storage spot. The uh, yeah, I, I feel like this is uh, not going to hurt anything, and the proportions to the lot size seem to be reasonable. If there's any questions. Uh. And, and what, is, what is the hardship exactly? Uh, as, as far as hardship is just that it's exceeding the size um, that's allowable for this lot and are just looking for permission to build a, a structure this size. It's a two-car garage with two lean-tos. He's got some equipment. He's got a, a, a trailer, like a camper that he's looking to have an overhead storage space for, and uh, we're, we're looking to build on the existing lot where he's got asphalt down already, so just building in place the existing asphalt. So as far as impervious uh, footprint, uh, most of what we're building on is already covered by asphalt, um, so it's not really, I mean, it's already impervious structure or impervious footprint. I don't think that answered the question. Can, can we see the pictures of the lot, please? Yeah, okay.
And so I guess it was my understanding that if the garage had been attached to the house, we wouldn't be here. So is that, why is it important to not attach the garage to the house? Yes, uh, the, so there is an existing uh, laundry room off the front of the house. Oh, well, I guess it'd be off the side of the house as viewed from this photo here. Uh, and it has a relatively flat roof, and it's uh, it's a fairly complicated tie-in to do that. And I'm concerned about uh, water penetration issues into the existing home if we try and tie in to the structure as it is. So, uh, due to the existing um, lean-to addition that's already on the house, it would be very difficult to tie into the existing structure. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, when I when I looked at it uh, and reviewed the cases, you know, last week, my first thought was, boy, there's a lot on this lot. <laughs> you know, um, you got a lot. Of, you know, it's sometimes sometimes folks come to us and they say, hey, I want to build a little bigger garage than I'm allowed, in part because my home is uh, may have a smaller footprint in. A, and yet I'm going to get rid of my existing sheds because it, it lets me consolidate. But this is really kind of adding, you know, a garage, two lean-tos to two existing spots. And, and, it, and it is, you know, basically, you know, you're allowed to build an 833-square-foot addition, but you've got a 1,200-foot addition, uh, not addition, but uh, outbuilding. And, another 250 feet of, of sheds. And so it just seems like uh, a lot. And I appreciate the neighbors. You know, I, I can see why the neighbors might uh, like this because, you know, it's going to be a nice building and keep the cars inside and that kind of thing. Um, but to Mr. Cole's original point of, you know, what is, what is the hardship? Hmm. Why is this different than your neighbors or anybody else's request who comes before us, that's that's what I'm having a tough time with. Well, I, it's, it's come to my, uh, it comes down to the storage and having secure storage. Uh, he's expressed concerns of, uh, with he said there's some rising crime rates in his neighborhood and he'd like to have some additional security for his equipment. He doesn't have a lot of storage space in the house. Uh, because it is a rather small footprint on the house. And so in order to accommodate secure storage of his existing equipment, he would like to have adequate space to do so. So, and so it's the, Lisa, I'm sorry, the, it's the, the 1,201, how do we get the, the 1,201 square feet of the garage? Does that include the lean-tos? Yes, it does. That's the total of the new proposed construction of the garage with the two lean-tos. So even if even if something is not enclosed, it's part of the square foot. Is it like a porch? Correct. And so the the garage itself is um, looks like it's eight hundred and thirty-two. So uh, I'm just looking at twenty-six by thirty-two. So Correct. The, so the twenty-six by thirty-two. So the garage itself is is in the allowable square footage. It's just the lean-tos that were what put it over. Is that? They have five hundred and seventy-seven square feet remaining of their allowable footprint for accessory structures by right. So. I, I'm sorry, I missed. Five hundred and seventy-seven square feet. So so they're allowed a total of eight thirty-three based on the footprint of their existing house with the additions. And of that, they already have the 256, so we deduct that from the 833. So if the, the garage you said was 26 by 32, that's 832 square feet just for the garage portion. So that would exceed the allowable, but it... Because of the other two ships. The other existing structures, yes. All right. Oh, if I could, can we go to the, the picture again? I'm, I'm looking at the tree in the back. Um, and, and if you didn't, you haven't been here, I don't think, a few times, but I'm usually the tree person. If I'm not, Mr. Pepper is. Um, how close are you going to get to that 
Now that's a fairly large tree in the back. I'm going to assume it looks like it's a maple, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> it's not a hackberry. I know that. No, much. It's, it's a white oak. Oh, okay. So, but it, you're going to build I don't, right up to it? Uh, I don't, I don't have the tree on my plans, uh, unfortunately. No, that's what, that, that's the only reason I'm asking the question. <laughs> I'm, I don't think it's anywhere near the tree. No. And it doesn't bother that little tree on the side either near the flagpole. That tree is uh, currently gone. It's no longer correct with us. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. All right. Any other any questions from the board? All right. Anything else that you have to add at this point? Uh, not at this time. I just would like to note that if if we are able to, uh, if we were to attach it, the only way that we could do it with with current construction constraints uh, with that shed would be to add additional roof line, and I don't believe that that would be in the best interest of uh, if we're if if the reason to hold the variance is. It, the, the way we would have to attach it would be to the back side of that str of the structure, and where you see that uh, the uh, nine by fifteen lean to, if you go back to the overhead, uh, the nine by fifteen that the little gap between where the the bump out on the existing house is, yeah, um, so we would we would have to tie in just a little roof line right there to avoid. Um, water penetration issues on the existing property. So in order to attach to the house, the best way that we can come up with is to add additional roof line. And if we're already concerned with the roof line, does it make sense to attach it to, 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 to add more roof line just for the sake of attaching it to avoid the variance? Okay. All right, any other questions? Anything else to add? I should be good. What, what let me just, I'm going to come back to Mr. Cole's question because it's really the crux of where I am right now is what's the hardship? We can't just do it because it feels right and you've got to give us a hardship to work with and if I've missed it. I, I well, thought, not me, I think it's me. <laughs> but I thought, the hard, I thought the hardship was, and he didn't state it this way, but when asked. So essentially it sounds like where they could by right, they could attach this to the house and they wouldn't need us, right? But because of how, because of the existing house and the water issues, if they attached it, like it would impact the structure of the existing house. So to avoid water damage and to avoid impacting that existing house, they're saying we have to come out and that, that's why, that's their hardship. So that's what I took Correct. him to say. To be the Thank hardship. you for articulating that for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now, I mean, you. Right, so, so do, or, did you, do you have a question for him? Yeah, so okay. it sounds like you guys um, thought about it. Did you, just so that you would need like less of a variance, did you guys think about maybe shortening the lean to so that you wouldn't, so the footprint wouldn't be as big of what you're asking us for? Because it sounds like that's tacking on to you too, in addition to the existing structures. Correct. So we wanted to shorten the lean to to, to exactly to, to minimize as much of the footprint as possible. And was there any way to do it any less just to minimize? Is there any way to do this any less so that you wouldn't need as much of a variance? We could maybe shorten the other lean to a bit. How long is it? Um, like I believe the camper is somewhere in the neighborhood of about what eighteen feet. Eight and, a fa eight and a half feet wide, but uh, as far as the, the length of, uh, we could potentially shorten the other lean to. Okay, thank you. That if was, that would help. Yeah, that was helpful. And we, we're open to, uh, <laughs> okay. we're open to uh, that. All right, so. any other questions? Anything else to add? We will close the public hearing. Thoughts? That doesn't mean anything. I just don't know if we typically roll on.
constructability as a hardship. <laughs> no, constructability as in how difficult it is to, to execute the construction of something. So, you know. And I think that's that's a fair point, and that's true. And it's it really is almost a case-by-case -case basis based on the specifics of each situation we're looking at. And, you know, on one hand, I mean, it, and that's the point, right? On one hand, they, we would not all be here talking about this if they had just proposed to attach it to the home. And that's an easy, it, we th I think it's an easy solution and y'all may, y'all are know a lot better than I do because y'all do this every day to say, you know, is it, you know, maybe just a, a little more expensive and, and, you know, you can solve this on your own. And then on the other hand, well, they, they presented their case for this and, you know, what, you know, other than, strictly meeting the code, which is important, but other than just strictly meeting the code, uh, what substantive difference is there by having a link to attachment versus uh, a code required definition attachment? You know, is it, is it, is what they're proposing radically different than the answer that would keep them from being here? And for me, it's not. <laughs> well, and, and so, you know, but yet at the same time, you, you articulated the hardship of, you know, which is construction related. And so it, it ultimately, I guess, is, is how do we want to handle this specific case that's brought to us um, in, in these specific circumstances when, uh, I don't know that there's anything else to say. <laughs> that no. was just pretty much it. No, so, you know, uh, Kind of in, in vain of what Mr. Lawless was saying, there's a lot on this site. Is there any, I guess, plan to consolidate, to remove those existing sheds in order to, to build this garage and lean to? Good. You want, did you want to ask the applicant? Yeah, I want to or then I'll open the public hearing. And uh, we are def we're open to uh, removing the uh, eight by 12 shed on the left side of the, or, property as viewed from Blue Brick Drive. Um, it would be preferable if we didn't, but uh, we're open to that. So open to removing the 8 by 12, but not the 10 by 16? I believe that's the case right now. Okay. I have a, I need a clarification on... And I'll close the public hearing again. Oh. Sorry, you're, you're good. Uh, okay. Um, I just want to understand it just a little bit more if they attached to the house they could build the 9 by 15 lean to the 26 by 32 garage the 9 by 26 lean to and keep both existing sheds okay thanks sorry tell me that again <laughs> yeah i was going to ask you that <laughs> oh, okay so everything so if they connected to the existing house everything shown on this diagram could be built that's that's what I was asking. I guess so, I just read it all out. Instead. So it truly goes back to Ashanti's point is that that substantively there's nothing different that could be on this lot where they do attach it and it's really up to us to say is there a reasonable hardship to allow them not to attach it and the hardship presented is somewhat construction related and water somewhat yes. So is that an, is that an acceptable hardship or not and and that I guess we can we can ask that question, and, and based on the nods or the the shaking of the heads of this group, we may see where this is headed. But well, is there? It it if I could just make one comment, it it's sort of a self-imposed hardship um, through the desire of having a garage, or no, not not having a desire, no. But I mean, it's. They're coming here asking for something they can, they've already testified that they could shrink it down a little bit on one of the two. And I'm not asking to do it, but I haven't, I'm just having a tough time with, with the hardship. I, I want to try to help them, but I just don't know how to get there without it appearing to be a self-imposed. Well, I, and I think, I think if that lean-to is, 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 
Lisa, is this correct? If that if that one lean to that's touching the house at that nine by fifteen, if it were enclosed, would that be considered? What does it have to do to be considered attached? The roof line, one continuous roof line. Okay, so they do have to to do the roof, yeah. even though. So in, so in this situation, the lean to is touching the house, but it's not considered. We'll clarify that. It's common roof wall and floor too. So the, I've got to be able to get from the, the residence through that through that structure. It's not just an abutting okay. with a with a roof line projecting over. I'm 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 fully attached, common roof, common wall, common okay. floor. I can get from the front door and walk right through that house to get to the building without going outdoors. So, so with that then they would be, have to be able to circulate through the lean to to the garage, right? Not just in a situation. Got it. Noted. All right. So, so, so we could basically not have that little existing eight by twelve, the dark blue square. It could go away and sort of be used and incorporated and That's consolidated. Right. That's what was testified to. Boy, I like that a lot better. I'm not. Uh, does anybody feel, want to attend that at this point? I think if there's a desire to not attach to the house, maybe the variance is to allow the 9 by 15 lean to and the 32 by 26 um, garage. And that's, I think, 900 something square feet. I don't think I would be. Personally, I don't. I think they're like everyone's been saying. There's too much on the site, and there has to be some give if there is to be a variance. Um, so is that granted. is that your your motion? Sure, that will be the motion. <laughs> and well, and 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 does, is any? I mean, let's try it out. <laughs> and is there a second to that motion? There is a second to that motion. So, and um, what's the motion? The motion is. Um, it's to allow um, the nine by fifteen lean to and the um, 26 by 32 garage to be constructed. Um, but not the nine by 20. And, oh, and get rid and um, uh, eliminate the sheds. Thank you for clarifying, for asking me to clarify. <laughs> that the, to that would be that. To eliminate the nine by 26 mm -hmm. lean to? Yeah, not, not be able to build the nine by 26 lean to and not have the sheds. Yeah, the eight by 12. Mm -hmm. both, both sheds are just one. I was going to go with both, but I could I'm, go with I'm, one. I'm, I'm on board with both as well. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are removing both sheds. Removing both. And offer and, mm -hmm. and having that one extra. And, and knowing that the, that attaching, you know, that, that it's possible to do this another way. Mm -hmm. So would you... You would not... I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward all that but keeping the big shed <laughs> the okay. one on the side because I think it's just stuck on the side and it, but you like the 10 by 16 I'm fine with the 10 by 16 I'm fine with the whole motion but I, it, I'd be happier with it if it added the 10 by 16 um oh okay so, so we're going now we're working over Mr. Cole's motion no, I no, think, no I think, and I were the same, I think. Yeah, I think they were the same. You could, if, and, if, and, if, the if, and I'm fine with either. I mean, I, I can live with either. If y'all make your, I'm sorry. Well, tell me, tell me your, tell me your, tell me your final motion. We'll see if it gets a second and then we'll go from there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, who's up first? Oh, this is kind of funny. Um, so the motion was to remove the two existing sheds and allow the variance of, I don't know how many square feet, to build the nine by 15 lean to and 26 by 30 to garage. It was 900 something square feet total, which was over, over the a little allowance. bit over the 833. Okay, allowance. and did that motion have a second? Does that motion has a second? Any discussion on that motion? All in favor of that motion, say aye and raise your hand. Any opposed? All right, that one's not quite there yet. Is there another motion? Okay. All right, then I'll, I'll, I'll put a stab at the middle, and then if that doesn't make it, then we think we know where that's headed. I'll say that, uh, that this motion would allow variance to uh, 
incorporate the nine by 15 lane two, the 26 by 32 uh, garage and the 10 by 16 uh, existing uh, outbuilding. You want the Okay, so you're, you're getting rid of the nine by 26. Lean two and the existing, the existing blue outbuilding and the lean two, they'd have permission to do uh, build the garage and the uh, lean two against the house. That motion has a second. Is there any discussion on that? All right, all in favor of that motion, say aye and raise your hand. That has four against. That has one. So that, were you for or against? I'm for it. All right, four. So that motion passes. So you have that option, and you certainly have the option to attach it to your home and have it all. So you at least have an option to do less than, than that. All right, last case. Uh, yeah, can we, a uh, quick four minute break has been requested. All right, so we'll take a quick break and then as the last case prepares to come up, we will take a quick break and then come back.